Welcome to Business Notes. I'm your host, Diane Bogino. My guest today is Karen Weinstock. Karen is a top award-winning entrepreneurial immigration attorney and is the managing attorney of Weinstock Immigration Lawyers. This law firm helps companies and individuals achieve the American dream by securing work visas and green cards to the United States. Karen is also the author of the book, Matched, from dating disasters to dream relationships. Now here's Karen to tell us about her journey into law and love. Karen, welcome to Business Notes and thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, thank you so much, Diane, for having me. Karen, you have had an interesting journey into law and love, as I said in the introduction. So let's begin with your journey into law first. You were born in Israel and I'll let you pick it up from there. Sure. So sure. I was born in Israel. Um, I was raised in a very good family and had a good, good childhood. And uh, it was really like America in the 50s. Um, so it was very safe and you can go out anywhere. We used to play outside. Uh, we took public transportation to go everywhere. And it was just kind of carefree, safe environment. And things kind of change, uh, things changed about fifth grade, I, I would say, where um, the uh, first Intifada came in um, with uh, the uprising and all the uh, security problems and issues that, that we've had. And, um, and then it kind of escalated from that in, in terms of uh, the personal security. But the good things that came out of it is really learning how to deal with adversity and resilience and a lot of things that the Israeli people are really known for. And so a lot of it has been really a good experience at the end uh, where, uh, where it kind of shaped who I am as a person. Um, then I went to the army. I, I was at an elite unit um, there for two years and then uh, went to law school at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, which is a, basically the law, top law school in Israel um, called the Harvard of, of, of Israel. So, um, so I graduated from there and then I just did not want to practice law in, in Israel. And so I kind of thought, OK, what can I do with my life kind of thing? And I didn't want to throw the legal career out of the, um, you know, out the window. And I was like, okay, I'll try the United States. We'll see how that goes. And so I studied for the New York uh, bar exam. I, uh, I came in, I passed. And, and then um, I thought I was going to go back to Israel and look for a job there. But a friend of mine said, no, 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 no. You have to stay here and look here. So that's what I did. And then I couldn't get a job without a visa and I couldn't get a visa without a job. And, uh, but one thing led to another and, um, and I got my first job, my first visa and um, kind of things evolved uh, from there. And uh, part of my hardships um, as an immigrant coming up uh, and, and coming here, um, I, I basically kind of implemented that in, into my own law practice. So I can actually help people when they come into the country. I know what they need. I know um, what they don't need for sure, um, but able to help them in a more meaningful way than just, hey, here's your paperwork. Here's your visa. Um, let's, let's get it over with kind of thing. Mm. So I look at it more holistically. Yeah, that's a long journey, long journey. So I admire you were sticking with that. And we're glad to have you here in the States. So let's talk about your journey into love. How did that come about? So, um, I got divorced about five years ago. And through the divorce, it was a very, very difficult divorce. It was very highly contested. We went through a court, like a bench trial for the custody. Um, my ex is like the most difficult person you've, you would ever meet. And so it was a very difficult time. And before the divorce, I tried marriage counseling for years, um, one year up front and then two years at the back end. And it's just the good thing that came out of marriage counseling was I, first of all, I read dozens of relationship books and, and, the, you know, and, and it just helped me solidify a lot of things and understand a lot of things. 
in, in relationships in general, but also specifically romantic relationships. And then the other part of it was that it really solidified for me that you really need to find a good match on the upfront instead of what everybody else does, which is falling in love with somebody, meeting somebody, then falling in love with them because of either chemistry or you just spend too much time together or whatever it is. Um, there's a bunch of reasons and, and some of them are in the book, but the, the, the take from that is you can't take somebody and change them. You, if you fall in love with somebody with who they are and who their, their, you know, what their characters are and what characteristics they have. And so all of those things, what values, beliefs, all of those things are super important from the start to figure out if there's a match, because if there's not a match, there's so much that a person can change. So if I'm a neat freak and I have a partner who's stuff is all over the floor, all over the house. It's just a messy person. Then they can change a little bit so much. They can change habits a little bit and whatnot, but in a core, it will bother me right to, to my core. And the relationship is not going to stick for the long term. And so if I, if I started that way and try to change the person, they would have to change so much that it's just not realistic. And, and so after the hormones kind of fade, then we're going to have a situation where you're going to have that disillusion, if disillusion phase and, and you're going to be done and there's going to be heartbreak and you go, oh my gosh, what did I do with this person? And the real work is to really find up front whether that person is a good match for you or not. And then you're at a much better chance of making it work long-term than not. So the major thing is, is to do the work upfront instead of the magical Hollywood moments that everybody's trying to sell us uh, in, in, in the romance in the books and, and whatnot, which is great as a, as a romantic type of dream. But in reality, you really need to assess the other person in a disqualifying manner. You, you're trying to disqualify the other person and figure out if they are worth your while, if they are worth your time to date, they're worth your while. And, and that's really what the book is about. Mm. And Karen, why do most romantic relationships end with breakups and broken hearts? It's really because people choose the wrong person for them. They go after the bright lights um, and um, the hormones, the pheromones, somebody who looks good, uh, a woman that's really hot or a man who's just very, very cool and, and successful. And we really are not focused on who we are, um, what we have to offer, what somebody else has to offer us. And, and we just... We don't think who is our real type. We probably go after the same type of person often. And so, but by the time that we're in the relationship, we are either in love, there's emotions involved. We really, we don't evaluate those things up front. And then we go chase down the rabbit hole and it's really too late by the time we're out the other side because we realize, oh no, he's, the, the person is not as truthful as I would like, or as honest as I would like, or the person is, is, you know, can't hold a job, for example, for example. So mm -hmm. if, if that was your criteria up front, then think about it up front and figure it out. Okay. I need somebody with a stable job. I want somebody with a, um, with a stable career. I want some, or, you know, if you're, if your thing is, okay, I want a sense of adventure, so you want to find an adventurous person, not somebody who just wants to stay at home and watch TV every Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, that's so, a big disconnect. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But we, we, we forget all that because we, we meet another person, we like them, or we are infatuated with them, and then everything else is out the window. Right. And what can people read, uh, learn from reading your book? a lot of things There's a lot of things that I've learned over the years with relationships in general um, and then 
also the relationship that you have with yourself. Um, I've had a lot of uh, good feedback from people who read the book that it really helped them solidify the relationship they have with themselves. So even if they're not in a relationship right now, or even if they're not ready for a relationship, it's, it's really understanding where they are now in the relationship process, who they are as a person, what they have to offer another person, whether it's be, you know, whether it be a friend or a romantic partner. And it's really about how you develop that and then how you build relationships. And even with friendships, who are the people who are going to be more, most likely to, to fit you as mm -hmm. a person? Of right. course, romantic relationships are much more difficult because you have the chemistry, the, the, the physical aspect that's connected with it. But in the core, it's, it's really very similar to a friendship. And if you don't really have a good solid foundation for a friendship with the other person, then a romantic relationship would never work. Mm, interesting. So what would be your advice though for someone who feels hopeless about finding uh, love? So there's hope for anybody, anybody. If I could do it, everybody else could. <laughs> Well, that's great um, to know. <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, really, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a topic that, that people ever learn. You know, you go to school, you learn math, you learn English, you learn reading and writing. But relationship stuff or how to choose a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a, or a husband or a wife, nobody teaches you that. Not even your parents. And, you know, your parents may, may, may be the best people and they have they can model the best relationships, but do, do, do you ever have a conversation with your parents, how to pick a boyfriend, how to pick a, a, a partner? No. And, 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 and sometimes, oftentimes they, they don't know either why they picked um, their, their, um, their husbands or wives either. And it's very interesting and you don't learn that in school. And you so, so, if you don't know how, and if you don't have the tools, and if you don't have the systems, you know, it's, it's just one thing that you can learn. And there's many things that you can learn in the book. And so if you learn how to and what to and, and what not to, then you're, you're going to be at a much better position to actually select and, and find somebody if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a toolkit for people to learn how to in this very sensitive area. And it's also very sensitive talking about it with your friends, with your family, and people just usually just either tend not to talk about it or talk about it very superficially. And obviously that does not work for the long term. Right, right. They probably don't know either. So it's, <laughs> it's not always good advice. Yeah, and, and sometimes I've gotten good advice from friends, and sometimes the advice was like, eh, I'd rather yeah. not do that. Right, yeah. No, I certainly think of any from my parents, that's for sure. Um, so, Karen, how can our audience connect with you? So, I have a book uh, website. It's called matchedthebook.com, uh, M-A-T-C-H-E-D, the, T-H-E, book, B-O-O-K.com. And um, if they sign up for the newsletter, um, I'm going to um, start a Facebook group soon. And the next um, thing that will come up, and I'll announce it on the website, will be a online course where um, basically going through the book in an online uh, matter through like different, uh, just me and the audience kind of connecting um, online and just going over the issues and um, we're going to add some questions and answers and coaching sessions and things of that nature. Oh, that would be powerful. So almost like a, a mastermind group then. Yes. And, and I think a lot of times when I've done mastermind groups in business and in other venues, it's been very useful to have advice of other mm -hmm. uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, people who have gone through similar situations, because even if the situation is not extremely, like it's not completely identical, it, it is extremely probable that you're going to have 
you can have enough in common to figure it out or to get some good advice from another person that's been to a, through a similar situation. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really powerful. Yes, it is. That's good. I'm glad to see you doing that. Karen, thank you so much for being on the show and for writing the book on this topic. And I really appreciate you starting the mastermind because people do need help in this area. And like you say, this is something we don't learn at school or oftentimes at home. And people do need help with it because of all the emotions that are involved. So again, I appreciate the work that you've done and thank you for being on the show. Great. Thank you so much, Diane. Thank you for having me. This is really a passion project for me. So I really, really want to help people in that, in that sphere. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you for watching Business Notes. We've been speaking with Karen Weinstock, award-winning immigration attorney and author of Matched from Dating Disasters to Dream Relationships. I'm your host, Diane Bogino, bringing you business ideas you can bank on.